What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. As always, big London derby, so we're actually coming with a video for you guys. We ain't coming with a live stream. And I'm here in, as always, the amazing We Are Tottenham TV studios. I've got my up. boys, Ben, I've got Sim with yes, me as Liz. well. Cool. First off, as always, how are you guys doing? How's your week been? Yeah, I mean, we're doing well. good. I mean, let's let's just keep football to one side for a second. <laughs> but we're doing good, you know what I mean? We're doing good. Can't yeah, complain. Yeah, all right. I mean, surprise is the only thing stressing me out at the moment, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Honestly. Ah, yeah, I wish we had the same problems. But <laughs> we'll <will> get into <laughs> Yeah, maybe not. But we'll delve into, into the video. As always, guys, smash the like and subscribe button on your way in if you guys haven't done so already. You guys already know we are Tottenham TV. But if you guys haven't checked out their channel, which again, I'd be really surprised if you guys haven't done so already. But the link is down in the description below and it's in the title as well. So if you guys haven't subscribed already, head down and subscribe for the best Tottenham content as always. And Bye -bye. you guys already know we're still running the lottery as as well for a free home kit so if you guys haven't done so already super chat on any of the streams regardless of whether the amount is could be 70 quid could be seven pence we don't care you guys are in the lottery regardless just smash a like and subscribe drop a super chat and you guys are in but let's go straight into the video and let's talk about tottenham versus chelsea and for you guys as well I'm really, w I'm trying to figure out what you guys' mood are going into the game because we spoke on mm. your preview as well, and I know you guys are a bit anxious going into the game based on Tottenham's form. But it's weird because I feel like if we did this preview a week ago, you guys would have probably been a lot more confident going into this game. So the first question to ask really is, what's changed? I mean, I don't. I, well, first of all, we're ravaged with injuries, and obviously the quarantine players, Giovanni Lascelles, with Danson Sanchez, and Romero locked in Croatia until literally Saturday so they're literally not going to get any training with the whole squad before the game so they're going to come in straight away they're going to have to play but what's really changed is we've won our, Nuno's come in we've won our first three games 1-0 1-0 1-0 the Man City game we absolutely were amazing that day I, I can't say anything else but we were absolutely brilliant watertight at the back really dangerous going forward but then then we played Wolves Wolves played us off the park to be honest and we got a lucky 1-0 win Watford uh, we dominated the game but again it was a very sloppy 1-0 win with a very lucky goal with Human Son taking a crossing free kick and it went all the way through so you're going into the international break top of the league three wins from three no goals conceded but when you actually look further into it we're not creating that many chances we're not that dangerous uh, we're looking solid at the back but it's just so boring to watch it's been very boring to watch these, these three games and and we come back, we play the Palace game with a host of injuries. I mean, the, the international break pretty much couldn't have gone worse for us than it did. And probably the worst international break for a very long time at Tottenham. And we've come back, we played Palace. Nuno got the tactics completely, completely wrong from the get-go. And we ended up losing the game 3-0. Yeah, he got it wrong. But the, what really ruined us was the red card. Um, mm. If the red card doesn't happen, maybe we nick a 1-0 win or we take away a draw or something. But when you look at it from a whole thing, it's just not been good enough from Tottenham. Even though we won our first three games of the season, I just don't think it's been good enough from an attacking point of view. And we're just not creating enough. And with that midfield three of Ali, Skip and Hoybier, there's just no creativity whatsoever. De Deli Ali's gone from a second striker to being better at centre-back now. I don't understand what's going on. And we're just not creating enough. I don't know how you feel. Yeah, it's. Um, I feel very similar. And it's not necessarily that we're playing atrociously it's just the structure of the team doesn't seem to be there just yet mm -hmm. and when you look at uh, us against a well-oiled team like uh, like Chelsea at the moment they've really got their formation and their pressing and how they dominate in each phase of the game like really down pat Tottenham at the moment we were getting by in games I think just the excitement and the adrenaline of that first game of the season got us through that first game against Man City since then though despite a few positive results the structure of the team just hasn't been very, very positive. We, we've, we've, as Ben said, we haven't looked very creative whatsoever. Um, our, our Harry Kane hasn't been getting involved in the play when he's when he's played um, as of yet. Uh, the midfield three of Hoybier, Skip, and Delhi, as much as they're hard working and they're very difficult to play against, they're um, off the ball, on the ball, they're quite easy to play against. They haven't been able to contribute in the final third that we need your centre mids to be doing to kind of playing progressive passes carry the ball we, we rank near the lowest we, we rank near the relegation zone for progressive passes for ball carries all this kind of progressive football stuff for shots on target we rank near the lowest in the league 
So as much as he's doing good stuff with the defence, which we needed to do after last season, and that's probably the first port of call, is get the defence right. We still need much more improvement on the ball if we're going to be really be hurting proper teams like Chelsea, I feel. All right, so you were saying the biggest problem with your midfield is on the ball. And specifically with Deli Ali, I want to ask us, what's mm. really been happening with him over this season? Like, I know last season, Jose just didn't really have much favour for him. He didn't get a lot of game time, but... I thought with that in mind, this season would be a good chance for him to break out into the squad to sh like put his name back in lights and show exactly what he's all about. But from the sounds of it, it doesn't seem like he's been doing that. And <sighs> has it been more on him or is it more of a tactical problem? It's, it's a difficult one to say because um, Deli Ali went away after the last season. Uh, he got himself super, super fit. He was out in Dubai uh, with Carl Walker Peters and literally he was showing on Instagram and stuff like that how he's working so hard to get his fitness up day by day by day. Comes back to Tottenham has a brilliant preseason under Nuno um, and he's in the team in the middle three but his role has completely changed within the team before he was a second striker tugged up to Harry Kane and really creative really attacking getting on the end of all these Christian Eriksen crosses and what have you but now Nuno's kind of turned him into a, like a workhorse in the middle of the park without creating much just being there solidifying our midfield you know contributing to our defense and he's no he's not contributing to the attack whatsoever his role in the team at the moment is contributing to the defense and keeping our midfield really solid and he's not really looking to go forward uh, which is a problem in my opinion because that means we've got no creativity in that midfield whatsoever and if you've got a midfield three of Hoybier, Skip and Ali he's the one that you're going to look for for a bit of attacking intent and creativity and we're just not seeing that at the moment and we just have no link from midfield to attack and that's why at the moment we're still seeing a lot of long balls over the top we're still we're not seeing any progression from the back line into the attack and if we're going to have if we're he's pretty much the only player in the midfield you're thinking he can get in the ball and be that link he can provide um, um, a, a way a progression but at the moment he's kind of too um, kind of concentrated in all doing the dog work and stuff in the middle of the park doing the strong challenges getting the pressures on and at the moment he's he's struggling to kind of um, get that balance right between going forward and and, um, and defending and his defensive duties but what, what I would say about Deli Ali is, though, that I think that he's working the hardest he's ever worked at Tottenham since he's been here. I think he's absolutely working like a like a literal dog on the pitch. He's He runs more than anyone. I think in that Man City game, I think there was a stat where he ran like six kilometres more than anyone on that football pitch. So, I mean, he's definitely putting in the work. He's definitely putting in the desire. He just needs to, to show a bit more attacking intent, in my opinion. Do you think that might be the, case, the problem, then? Because he might just be doing a bit too much and he's not really focusing on what he's meant to be I, at his well, best for. I tell you, in De Delhi's role, in what, the thing with Delhi is when he was playing in a more offensive position behind the striker, he used to try things very often, little flicks. He used to try, you know, remember that goal against Crystal Palace, flicking over and shooting on the edge of the box? He used mm. to try these, he used to have these moments of absolute quality that could either bring an assist or a goal. And he used to try it very often. Just remember that goal at the bridge a few years Exactly, years that goal at the bridge. Uh, like all these kind of things. He used to, like, he used to be right place, right or, time. Or even, yeah, even then, like running late into the box over yeah. Christian Eriksen. You remember when he scored two carbon copy goals against you? When Christian Eriksen yep. uh, crossed it in and Deli Ali was just there running into the box. This, that, that won't happen anymore. So he used to try those things and when but now he's in centre mid you know when he when he tries things in in behind the striker right and in a free roll when he's trying things it doesn't come off he's losing the ball in your attacking third and it's like okay yes he's turned over position but turn over the ball but either you can make a tactical foul near your penalty area which doesn't usually result in a yellow card or you gives the, the team time to get back in position when he's playing in centre mid the problem is on the ball he's actually not that great in the middle of, in the middle of the park because he's not that great when he's got, he's actually quite easily dispossessed. That's a big problem, and he's putting the team under a lot of pressure on the ball when That's he's, why it's when he's receiving at those it. Flicks and everything, exactly. One, two touches, exactly. And, and he's actually not that impressive when he's in the middle of the pitch because he, his passing range. He doesn't have great vision over, you know, looking at the whole pitch. He's not going to play a long raking pass or a through mm. ball from the centre. But he's only very good in and around the penalty area. So he's actually, he actually can be quite frustrating on the ball when he's in the middle third. But then isn't that the manager then and the setup too? Because it's, you've gone from a defensive manager to another defensive manager and you play defensively minded, you're going to have those attacking players receive the ball and a lot higher up the pitch and that might be the problem in itself. Yeah, it could be the problem. But if, if, if you want to go for a 4-3-3, three, three, I mean, we don't have much option because you're not going to play him on, on either flank because that's just not going to work. You're not going to play him as a false number nine or, or a striker because that's not going to work. So in the midfield three, I just think he's the kind of 
um, missing piece kind of thing. Like he he's the one that doesn't really fit in. Um, so I think if we're going to play a midfield three, we need someone like a Tangi Undombele or a Giovanni Lo Celso there who can actually cause some magic on the ball, drive forward and actually have some attacking intent. Speaking of Ndombele, because that's a completely different topic, I want to know what the hell's been going on with him. He's looking, <laughs> he is looking like one of your it's most the, talented midfielders. He is, he is, he I, is. I, we know there's been problems about his uh, work rate and everything, whether he can last a full 90 and that's yeah. already been discussed about. But like, what's the new rumours coming out with him uh, apparently looking to leave in the either January in the summer well yeah he put in a transfer request in the summer we tried to shift him out um, no we had no takers for him I mean it's difficult because we signed him for 65 million Daniel Levy's going to want to recoup that or close to that and also he's on 200 grand a week so if you're on 200 yeah. grand a week like what what team are going to match those wages of what he's shown at Tottenham right nobody mm -hmm. close to nobody and especially the teams he's want to go to he thinks he's good enough to go to a Barcelona to go to a Bayern Munich to go to a Real Madrid maybe this Barca <laughs> maybe this Barca but on what he's shown in a Tottenham shirt yes he's shown glimpses of absolute brilliance but what he's shown on a consistent basis he's nowhere near those teams but what I would say about him is that the sheer quality that he has he's got the potential to be the best midfielder in Europe and I'm not even joking like the sheer technical ability he has is is He's second to bar nobody. I think the actual uh, uh, talent he has and the ability he has, I, I genuinely believe there's no one better than him on the ball in Europe. It's just about his work rate. Yeah. It's about his Do mentality. Do you remember the nil-nil against us back at the bridge? I remember him just dancing around Silver and Kante for fun. He yeah. does things that you can never believe on the full pitch. Even on Thursday, he yeah. can just do it like literally as some random like conversation. He's just doing things you've never seen on a full bridge before. How he gets, he, his imagination and creativity, I've never seen anything like it when he's being pressured and when player like he, he, he goes past players like they're not even there when he's got two or three players around him. And like, it's not just speed though, it's because he's not the quickest in Dombele, but he somehow just go like weaves in and in between players like, he uses back heels and nutmegs. I've never seen someone nutmeg a uh, player so often in one game, like on Thursday, about four or five nutmegs in one game. Incredible, incredible piece of skill. And not only that does he have the skill, he has the final ball as well. He's got a brilliant through ball and a brilliant passing ability as well. He's got the final product with him. He just needs to uh, um, able to marry that work rate and that work ethic off the ball with his imagination. And he, he's the ceiling is there's no ceiling for him. There's and the no the, pro for the him. problem is with Undombele is that when when he doesn't turn up for a game, you are literally playing with ten men because you can just breeze past him. When he gets on the ball, he'll just lose the ball. I mean, when he's not up for it. <laughs> There's no point in having him mm. even on the bench, never mind on the team. But when he's up for it, I mean, literally, I, I don't think there's a better player. I'm not even joking. Uh, well, before we go to score predictions, let's just talk about Chelsea for a little bit because I do want to gauge you guys' mm. thoughts on the way Chelsea have set up and the way Chelsea have prepared for this season as well. And what are your thoughts going into Tottenham versus Chelsea? not great to be honest I mean I, I have not been looking forward to this game all week um, I'm I'm really dreading it I really am and I think this is the first uh, not the first but I think I've dread this game many times in the past before but I think this is probably the most um, I've ever dreaded this fixture um, the way we're coming into it the way we're playing our football uh, the way you're playing I mean the way I look at Chelsea the way I look at your manager Thomas Tuchel I mean he is the real deal I, I hate to say it, especially on your channel, but he is. He is the real deal. The way he's come in, the way he's transformed you, um, your defence is absolutely watertight. You can't get past them. Um, the way you are as a unit, the way you are as a whole unit, from defence all the way up to the attack, absolutely sensational. And, you know, you filled that kind of void in the squad that you had from last season in Romelu Lukaku. And there's no better player that you could have done that with, literally. And I, I'm, I'm frightened for, for the weekend. I'm not joking. Yeah, the way the, the, <laughs> I the, you've really perfected that three of the back system. You look, you look even better than you did under Conte, I think, in that three of the back system when he used to play it. I mm. think you look um, a lot more, a lot, you look a lot more in control um, than you did under Conte. You had you played that through the back system, but you didn't always dominate possession. You relied on our counter attacks of Hazard and you're a lot and more defensively like minded with it. With Tuchel, we can play defensive yeah. three four threes and attack. With Tuchel, three, four, I feel like you dominate possession. You 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 suffocate teams. Then you got the unbeatable at times. Up. And then you feel like your squad as well is just so deep. And uh, look, I think Spurs would have a chance in this game. And maybe if we had a fully fit squad, we would maybe have a chance of getting a result. But with all the injuries coming into it, you know, we just lost Bergvine and Lucas on Thursday. Son is struggling to be fit for this game. Literally leaves Kane and Hill as our only attacking um, 
at any attacking uh, players in going into it, only forwards. Then you got to chuck into that. You got Romero, Lo Celso, and Sanchez who are arriving a day before from Croatia because they've been um, doing their fitness regimes. We're re like they're going to play, but whether they, they're going to be ready, acclimatized to the team, whether they're going to be up to up up up, um, up there with the tactics and everything, how we approach the game. It's going to be so difficult for Tottenham to compete in this one, where Chelsea have barely any injuries. Uh, they, they know everyone knows their role. It's going to take a lot of luck for Tottenham to, to get a result in this game. That's how I'm feeling, honestly. I think um, I think the circumstances. You're playing us at like the perfect time, basically. Yeah. That's how I feel. You're playing it's the best team in Europe playing uh, um, Tottenham at the perfect time, and even if we weren't playing us at the perfect time, we would still struggle. So that's why it's. I can't see. It's going to be so hard for Tottenham to get a result. Exactly. You know what I mean. I'd love to come on here on your channel and talk about how we're going to thump you and stuff like that but that would just be pure delusion it would be pure delusion and if we're going to move I over I wouldn't blame you for backing your team <laughs> at the very least <laughs> let's get to the score prediction in a second mm -hmm, but cool. um, I will back my team and I'm always going to back my team but I'm just saying I'm coming into this very very cautious so if there was a way for you guys to try and get a result against us where do you think the best asset would be for you guys to do that probably down Marcus Alonso's side I would say set pieces I would say um it's slim pickings, man. It's it really is slim Son pickings. To be fit. If Son's fit and 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 we can kind of make use of him getting in behind your defence somehow. I know your defence is wall tight, but you know Son has a knack of um, um, in these big games finding something and finding uh, an avenue and a bit of space. And he's the one player who, if he if he is available, he could really hurt you. As much as I love Kane, um, if he's if it's Kane up against three centre backs and no runners next to him then we're not going to have anything. But hey, Son's done it against Rudiger before, so who say he won't do it again? Exactly, he has to be fit. <laughs> yeah. So he has to be, uh, we don't even yeah. know if he's going to be I needed fit. that memory. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Right, we'll go into score predictions before we round up this video. I'm going to go for the standard 2-0 Chelsea win. Could be a 1-2-0. or two nil. I do think Spurs are going to be really hard to break down regardless of how both teams are going into the game, but I will be confident in us getting a result. It all just, it all just depends on how many clear-cut chances Lukaku gets. But what are you guys' thoughts in terms of score predictions i'm going i'm gonna go one nil spurs i'm gonna go one nil spurs you know nobody's giving spurs a chance in this game whatsoever everyone's saying that chelsea have pretty much already got the three points and it's all wrapped up and i can see where they're coming from i can but we've been here before we've been here before where nobody's given spurs the chance uh cast your mind back 2015 five three and there's been some other results in there as well uh, when we beat you at the bridge no one gave us a chance so there's been a lot of times when spurs and chelsea have come up against each other and nobody has given spurs a chance and we've come through um so that's the only thing i'm clinging on to at the moment that's the only way i can see a victory uh one nil um a very lucky win i hear that sim what are you saying I don't think we're going to get anything from this, unfortunately. I would love to say, even a draw, I'd love to say I'm going to get a one all. But I can't. I can't. I don't think we will. That's my honest opinion. I think we're going to lose. And I think Chelsea, even if it's 1-0, I think it's probably going to be 2. But I do think we're going to lose, unfortunately. I think Chelsea are just too superior right now. Unless we get some luck. And maybe a red card. You know, as Mourinho says, we have to be... You know, like I don't, exactly. like I don't want to demonetize the video, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, maybe, maybe we can get a, get a guy sent off. You know, maybe Son can outrun Jorginho like he did that one time. You never know. But other than that, I can't see, can't see us getting anything. I hear that. I, at least we got the same score prediction correct right, <laughs> at the very least. But big up everyone that's been locked in from the start to finish. As always, smash the like and subscribe button. I already said, unless you guys have been living under a rock and you guys, <laughs> we are Tottenham TV. Man. Come, Come on. on. You guys already know. Link is down in the big title, up. down in the comment section below as well. Check it out. If you guys haven't done so already, like and subscribe. Get them closer to 100k as always. Like and subscribe here too as well. Get us close to 25k as well. We're doing our own little road to as well. So every subscriber is necessary necessary and needed but guys it's been yet another video we are out and we'll see you guys probably the day after tottenham versus chelsea for a stream but until then like subscribe let us know your score predictions down in the comment section below and we'll see you guys very very soon up the chelsea